back into the place that you are supposed to be. I will put you back in the land that you're supposed to be. I will bring children to you that you never expected yeah. to have. Yeah. And so tonight I want us to I want us to take this encouragement that, that even though we're we're facing the kind of environment that we that we in face, we're we're facing the kind of situation in our country that we're facing. We're in, in our whole world actually. We're we're living in a, in a in a very difficult time. But but I want you to understand that, that God is in a place where, where He will never forget you. He has actually engraved you on the palm of His hand. And if, and if you have made a mistake, if you have fallen away, if you have done wrong, the road back is always there for you. God wants you to come back. You know, if we if we look at this passage of scripture, we look at all the things. That, that God says about what, what the people of Israel had done. If we would read the, the previous chapter, we would we would find all the things that, that Israel had done wrong. And if you look at that, you realize that, that in spite of everything that they had done wrong, God still wanted them to come back. Amen. That should give us that should give us an overwhelming uh, uh, love for God, a desire to, to serve God and to obey God. Because you might think tonight that, that, that you are where you are because of a mistake that you made. And it might be true and it might not. Because sometimes I have discovered we take guilt upon ourselves where, where guilt is not necessary. We, we, we put burdens on ourselves where, where burdens are necessary. But even, even if you've done that, the way back is the exact same. Repentance and to shoot and returning to the purpose for which God created you. You see, tonight, everyone, every single one of us has, has, has a God-given, a God-designed purpose. Mm -hmm. I know Brother Doug taught on this uh, 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 several months ago. I, I, didn't have the, I didn't have the opportunity to, to, to sit and listen to that, so I don't know if I'm repeating things that Doug said or, or am adding to it or taking away. So either way, just forgive you, right? But, but well, I want you to understand the, the primary purpose of this. I mean, my primary purpose is not to be a pastor. My primary purpose is to be salt and light in this world. Amen. Would you agree? God created me to be salt and light. He placed me here to do what I need to do here. He placed you here to do what you need to do here. But your primary purpose in life is to be salt and to be light to this world. You're supposed to, by your life, by your obedience to God, by your, by the way that you do things, by the way that you live, and by the way that you operate, God, you, you, the reason you're here is to be salt and light. Sometimes we get carried away with, with what to find out if we need to be a pastor, if we need to be a, a song leader, if we need to be whatever. Uh, many, many times I think pastor can attest to this, that, that we would just as soon find a place to resign. <laughs> it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> but we can never get away from, if, if, if God, if that's the primary purpose or if that's not the primary, if, if you can never get away from the purpose for which God created you. And there's always a way back to that purpose, right. to be salt and light. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, it, it, there, there is probably circumstances and situations that people have done things where they have disqualified themselves from places of leadership, but there is always a way back to the primary purpose, and that is to be salt and light. I mean, I mean, there have been people that have committed heinous crimes that are in prison for it. They can still be salt and light in prison. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? And so, and so we need to realize tonight that, that God uh, has a purpose and a plan. And so, and so tonight, instead of getting uh, weary, instead of getting upset, instead of getting scared, or instead of worrying about what your position is in God, just realize that God absolutely loves you. And, and if you have been making mistakes, He just wants you to get it right. He wants you to learn the path to, to righteousness. To live in holiness. I mean, the last couple of weeks, I think uh, Brother Doug and, 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 and Pastor had mentioned it, but we've been talking about holiness and, and, and the absolute need for purity and, and living and living a, a godly life. Right. And and, uh, and and that and that's what it is. It, that's what makes your life right. Amen. When you live in holiness, when you live a righteous life, that is when you are fulfilling the purposes of God, of being salt and light. Praise God. So we, we serve. So so I want you to understand this. It, it's not. It's not that hard to serve God. 
Sometimes with all the information that we have, the ability to, to listen to uh, hundreds of TV evangelists and, and, and to read hundreds of books, we get confused because we, we, start, we start forgetting what, what our primary purpose is and we start pursuing something that's not really what God has intended for us. But if we get back to this book and just get back to serving God from a, from a pure and an honest heart, you can never go wrong. Amen. I remember uh, years and years and years ago, um, so that would be like 30 years ago. <laughs> years, Brother, Brother John, just years and years. <laughs> and when I was just knee high to grasshopper, I was, I was 20 years old. But I, I remember kneeling beside my bed and saying, God, because I had just been in, in a conversation with a person that was, uh, that was uh, you know, uh, uh, saying one thing and saying that thing, and I was confused. I said, God, what I want more than anything is just to know the truth. And I want to live my life for the truth. And I want to live in truth. And, 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 uh, and I look back in my life, and I look back at, at the things and the places that God has placed me. Uh, circumstances that I did not find comfortable. Situations that I did not enjoy. Anybody else been there? <laughs> but I, you know what? Every single one of those situations I would not want to undo. Because I learned truth. I learned righteousness. And I learned holiness in those circumstances when I found out what God was doing in my life. Did I say they were pleasant? I didn't. They weren't. And, and, and I just want to encourage you, if you are in that kind of a situation right now, if you are in the middle of those kinds of, that kind of a circumstance right now where you just don't know why you're where you are or what, why you're doing what you're doing, just realize that God's bringing you to a place of truth. God's beginning to get, getting you ready to show you something. God's getting you ready to, to experience something that is going to be, that is going to take you further than you've ever been before. There, it is great, I believe it's absolutely essential that we remember our salvation, that we remember our infilling, but you can't stay there. Right. You, can't, you can't stay there. You've you got to move on. But you've got to take it with you. Right? When, 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 God brings, when God reveals new things to you, it's not, it's not because he's, you're, you're getting rid of the old stuff. You're, 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 you're realizing what, that, that God's adding to, adding to your life or that God's taking away things that you put in there that shouldn't be in there. So life, life is, is, is quite a journey. I, um, you know, there is, there is, every now and then, I, believe it or not, I get, I get uh, stressed. I don't know why. Uh, I could say a few things, but it's not going to help me any. Uh, and, and you know, you, you get stressed sometimes, you find it difficult to sleep. Anybody ever, ever, ever get there? Uh, and, and, you know, when you can't sleep, uh, you get up and you're even more stressed because you're because you're tired, right? And and then because you're tired, you do things that you shouldn't do, and so that just makes you get stressed more. So it's almost like it's a vicious circle, right? And uh, so uh, last night I, I got up uh, at, at two o'clock in the morning, and uh, uh, you know it's 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 you know I, I did a favor, I gave myself a favor months ago, I bought myself a router so that, that I could actually program this router to, to shut the Wi-Fi signal off at 10 o'clock and not let it come on until 6 o'clock. It's been good for me because, you know, it's, it's so easy to, to, uh, to pick up some device and just waste away time while you're, while in the back of your mind you're fretting, you're worrying, you're, you're stewing, you're upset. And, 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 and you, you know, you while away some time until you get sleepy enough to go to sleep and, and, and you go back to bed and go to sleep. But last night, I, I, I thank God I had done that a while back, and, and, and so that saved me a couple of nights where, you know, instead of reaching for a device, I actually reached for the Bible. Novel idea. <laughs> I know you guys are, I know you guys are way ahead of me. You, you've been doing this for, for years. But, you know, I began to read in the Psalms. And, and one of the first things that I started to read at the, read at the Front of, the, of the book of Psalms, and it says, you know, uh, and it talks about uh, it talks about uh, meditating on the Word of God. Uh, 
it, it actually says that the, 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 the righteous man that meditates on the word of God will be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth its fruit in the season, its leaf will wither, and its flower will fade. And I was thinking, wow, uh, I, I need to read some more of this. And, and so I, I just kept on reading through the book of Psalms, and then and within about 15 or 20 minutes, I was like, I was, I was peace right in. I, I began to realize that God's in control of everything. Right. I began to realize that, that, that God cares about me and that, that this, is, this is actually something that God wants me to do, is, is just to spend time with him meditating on his word and realize that, that he's got things under control. Right. You see, there is, there is, there is uh, situations in our life that we cannot control. Can't control. Right. We want to control it. We want to manipulate it. We want to, we want to, we want to, we want to get our grubby little hands on it, and we want to do whatever kind of damage that we want to do on it. But, but it's beyond us. We can't do anything about it. And, 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 and if you're like me, I, I'm a, I keep telling my kids this, and they believe me. I'm a control freak. If I, if, 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 if I can't control it, I freak out. <laughs> I have fun with that, okay? But, but, but we're like that. We, we, people are like that. We get to a place where we, 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 if we can't control or manipulate a situation that, that we don't like, then, then we get upset and get stressed out. But we have to get to a place where we realize that God is in control. Right. And, and, he, and his ways are, are, are much higher than our ways. His thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. And he's got a purpose and a plan for everything that goes on in our life. I, I love what it says in Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. It says, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercy, mercy shown to David. I, I believe that, that God has the ability to satisfy every need in my life. Amen. In my life. Amen. There you know, there, there is people that chase after wealth, and the more they get, the less satisfied they are. There is people that, that, that chase after possessions, or chase after things, or, or chase after relationships, and, and, and they are never satisfied. But God promises satisfaction. God promises that if you come to Him, He will satisfy you. That's, that's beautiful. I mean, I mean, God is not against you having possessions. God is not having it against you having wealth. In fact, I believe, this is my, maybe this is a personal opinion of mine, but I believe that God makes some people really wealthy, and then some people are not as wealthy. The people that are wealthy just have more responsibility to, to be faithful and to be good stewards of their money. Actually, people that don't make much money are responsible to be good stewards and faithful with what God has given them as well. Amen. But but you, you see I you know I it, it's very easy for us to in in, in our socialistic uh, mindset of today that that if, if, if brother Fox has, has has more money than I do then I'm jealous of brother Fox and and so but but we get jealous of each other for what reason everything you need to satisfy your life is in there. And, and actually, if you follow this book, God will bless the work of your hands and make you satisfied with what you have. Or you can run and look for money to try to satisfy an emptiness inside of you, and you will find money, or not, and it still won't satisfy you. Amen. So really, the, the only real thing to do, whether you've got money or don't have money, whether you've got possessions or don't have possessions, whether you've got things that you're looking for or don't have what you're looking for, is to get into that book. Amen. Because that book here is your life. Right. It's what's going to give you life. It's what's going to give you yes. what, what you need. And, 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 and because we're living in the day that we're living, uh, I want to be absolutely ready for the return of the Messiah. Yes. Right. And, 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 and I was thinking just before church that uh, I was remembering some of, the, some of the circumstances that I used to, to be in when I was 30-some uh, uh, years ago. 
working for working for my employers, 